Are you a lifelong fan of General Hospital? Are you a new fan who wants to know more about the history of the show? Do you enjoy talking about the show with others? Do you find yourself yelling at the TV? Is your self-care an hour a day in Port Charles? If so, we invite you to join hosts Amanda Kimmel and Shannon Coach at the place where all the hidden conversations take place and secrets are revealed. Meet us at Pier 54, a General Hospital fan podcast. Hello. Hi. That was really shaky. Sorry. <laughs> Welcome to the Poor Charles 411. Today we're talking about stone cakes. Yay. And if you've been listening to our show for any amount of time, you know that Amanda is a huge... How can you not be? Well, I know that... So, like I have said many times before... I'm sorry that you're too young. That's so what we're going to get to. He first appeared October 13th, 1993. Mm-hmm. I had just turned 11. I was in sixth grade. And it was 15 days before my best friend died. So I'm going to guess, too, also at that time, I was not really into caring about General Hospital right? at the time. I didn't realize that timeline. Well, I mean, but looking at it now. Right. So that's kind of where. But I was also 11, so I only watched. That totally makes sense. I was 13, and we had just moved back to Ohio, but a different part of Ohio than what we had lived in. So I had no friends. And I was calling my friends back home. You had to wait until nighttime because of the rate yep. change because we're that old. And so when I came home from school, that was my escape. Like, right. I could connect with these and people. And you were in the age where you came home earlier. Yes. So you were able to. Yeah, their schools actually ran, like, way earlier than ours. Like, I was home way decently. So hmm. I sat down, and, and that was my – my family didn't bother me because it was come home from school and decompress time. Right. And I just zoned in on – I love Jagger and Stone and – Karen and Robin, and it was awesome. So I probably would have watched over the summer of 94, 95. But, but by then you weren't emotionally invested as much. Well, and that's the thing, because, like, as I'm watching all these videos, mm-hmm. I'm like, I remember some of this, but I'm like, do I remember the outcome later? Right. Two to three years later, or do I actually remember this yeah. happening? So I don't know. Because I think we talked about it before that – one of the first memories I have is Lily dying. Right. Which was after Stone. Yeah. So. Right. You probably caught it here and there if somebody else but had I had no idea TV. what the heck was going on. Yeah. That's okay. We'll forgive you. Yep. So we are going to use multiple sources. I have watched a lot of YouTube. Yay. I know that I am missing a ton of stuff from watching YouTube. I will link the YouTube videos. There are so under, many. Oh, there's so many, but at the same time, not a lot. True. It's, I I have cried before. I have seen <laughs> his passing before, but this time I hard ugly cried because I had watched everything leading up to it. So we're gonna use YouTube, GeneralHospitalFandom.com, our General Hospital scrapbook, probably Robin's diary, Curly Q. Girls. We're just gonna talk about everything. We're gonna do everything because General Hospital Fandom doesn't have a really big storyline for him. It's like five paragraphs, and it's like no 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 no. He did a lot more than that. He's so cute. So he was portrayed by Michael Sutton. So cute. And he debuted in 1993, like I just said. And he has had a couple of angel guest appearances, I guess we could say. I'm trying to count. Was there two? Mm-hmm. I was trying to, like, We'll talk about it because I watched him. I was trying to think. I did not I did not watch as much as I'm sure that you did because I remembered most of it. And it was funny because I watched some Friday night and then... Uh, I wanted to watch the death scene before I came over here with you today. And Emily was like, what? And started getting into it and trying to have a conversation. And I was like, no, 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 I don't have time for this. I have to go talk to Shannon. But I will answer all your questions later if you would like. Right. So the one that I watched the most was Robin and Stone, 1993 to 1995. And it says part one, but it wound up being just that. It's by OCD4 Lane on YouTube. And I will put the link to it in our show notes so you can watch and the summary for that just says the greatest love story ever told the majority of rns scenes are not edited for rns therefore you will have to fast forward through just to get to their scenes but it is in chronological order best that i could do which was fabulous it was really really good so we talked a little bit about stone already when we talked about karen right because she was who met him first and we didn't know he was any relation to jagger Right. Or anything to do with that. Because she met him. Well, she met him as Stone, but Jagger kept saying his brother Mike. Mike. Yes. Do you want to get started telling us about how Stone came to Port Charles? Michael Stone Cates met and aided Karen Wexler 
at a party after someone slipped ecstasy into her drink. Was that it? Was a, that was the rave, right? It wasn't a yeah. party. No, there's a difference. We had this conversation. I know. I've never been to a rave, but a party. You've been to parties. I've been to party. Um, Stone was separated from his brother and sister when he was young. His mother and father died, and his brother was left to take care of his siblings. Soon, his brother had to give Stone and his sister up. Stone was the younger brother of John Jagger. Kate's, who was dating Karen. Karen didn't feel like she was good enough for Jagger, so she ended it between them, and Brenda Barrett comforted him. That's a whole nother conversation. I was gonna say, I'm like, that has nothing to do with Stone. Why is that even in there? It's in here, but that's a whole nother. That'll be a good 411 also. Yep. Stone was living with mobster and owner of the Paradise Lounge, Sonny Corinthos. And it was right when Sonny came, too. Yes. Sonny had just arrived. I think Sonny came in August of 93? No. No, because he celebrated 25 years a couple years ago. Oh, no. August? Yeah. Yeah. yeah August 93, was, yeah. Because he didn't do anything before that, before the Paradise no. Lounge. I was thinking that we're doing this 411 because it's been 25 years since Stone passed away. So I was thinking the math oh, was wrong, but I wasn't thinking about... So he had to so build yeah, up to Stone passing up, away. <laughs> he showed up, right. Um, He showed up two months before Stone. Wow. I, but I don't remember him doing anything that, like, brought him to the front of the canvas before this. Okay. You know what I mean? Like, this was the storyline that really made him... Sunny becomes Sunny. Sunny started seeing the young Karen who was stripping at his club and he got her hooked on drugs, which we already talked about. Yep. Go back a couple weeks ago. We talked about Karen Wexler. Exactly. However, she hid that part of her life from everyone else. Jagger was searching for his brother with the help of Brenda. I don't know that she helped that much. And soon enough, the two brothers were reunited. They began rebuilding the close relationship they had as kids. Jagger became a cop and got engaged to Karen. He saved Stone from a whole load of trouble when Stone was going to be the driver of a getaway car that would bust mobster Frank Smith out of prison. Jagger and Stone had a really difficult time reconnecting. So it's not like Stone saw Jagger and was like, oh my gosh, there you are. It was, he was hurt. He was Right. And Jagger came on a little too strong because he was being the big brother and instantly wanted things to go back because he asked Stone to move in. Right. And then at the very end, when he was moving away with Karen, he wanted him to come to with him. And all of that was just too much. They needed to rebuild slowly, and Jagger yep. wasn't all for that. And he and Karen had a bigger friendship than what we just read, which we talked about a right. lot in right, Karen because Wexler's... It, we talked about Karen Wexler's pill addiction. We didn't just talk about the character, because that... that oh, we still have thing. a whole much. Yeah. Yes, but... A whole much. A whole much. A whole much more. <laughs> I don't know. Stone was Karen's friend in the way that he saw that she wanted to be friends with, more than friends, with Sonny, but he also knew that that could take you in a bad path. And that's whenever he referred to Crystal, which I said on the whole pill addiction, I didn't realize that that was the girlfriend that had started all of the bad things for Stone. So it's like he was trying to help Karen out, and it was really weird, because like he was trying to help her out with her own stuff, but then keep her away from Sonny, but get her close to Sonny? Right. Does that make sense? I think he like, saw, like he tried to explain to Robin, there were good parts of Sonny and there were bad parts of Sonny. And you couldn't separate the two completely, but you could try to stay in that lane. Right, right. And one of the things that it doesn't mention is that Jagger saw at the arcade that the name Stone was listed under the high scores on a machine that was Mike's favorite. And oh. Jagger had hired Felicia and Mac. Yes. That was so to look for good. Stone. But this whole time, Karen is becoming friends with Stone, not knowing that it's Mike. Yep. And then you just mentioned Crystal. You didn't just no, I did. I was saying that I didn't realize that Crystal, I think he saw Crystal in Karen. Like they were both, when they came on the scene, they were both good girls yes. who had issues they were trying to deal with. And he didn't want Karen taking that same path that Crystal had taken. At that time, we didn't right. know that Crystal was HIV positive, but we knew that she had passed away. Well, she Some died of a her. drug overdose. Right. That's the thing. So talking about Crystal, Stone told Sonny that Crystal told him that a woman was looking for him. And I think that's when it was Mac and Felicia mm-hmm. were looking for him. Right. And, and then they showed up at Sonny's club. Yep. Mac and Felicia came into the Paradise Lounge to ask questions about a young girl named Crystal who used to be Stone's girlfriend and who used to work at the club because she had overdosed on drugs and Mike Cates, a.k.a. Stone, was a runaway. Sonny tells them that Crystal had gotten hooked on drugs and left the club three to four months ago, and he hadn't seen her since. He also lies and tells him that he's never heard of Mike Cates. Right. After closing time, Sonny informs Stone of Crystal's death. She was an IV drug user, and the following year we learn this is who he contracted AIDS from. So Sonny told Stone that she had passed away. Stone is crushed, and that's Mm -hmm. when he's, like, all confiding in Karen and everything. He actually winds up paying for Crystal's 
I know. You're all... he's so sweet. Yep. That, that storyline, Stone's involvement with Karen is where we see that Stone is a really good guy. Right. Who's working for Sonny because he wasn't run away and didn't have any other options. That yep. he's not just a bad team. Right. Exactly. And he really cares. And so, like, he goes and he pays for Crystal's funeral out of his own pocket. And that kind of triggers Mac and Felicia, like, right. Why would he do this? Yes. And then that's when he and Jagger got reconnected. It was like after all that stuff. Right. And Jagger called him and Karen out on it. How come you guys didn't say that you knew each other? Right. Because we're leading double lives. Yeah. But then Jagger and Stone also wound up working out at Lenny's gym Mm -hmm. together. And that's not the gym that Sonny owns now, right? I don't think so. Which I think is not that you couldn't have more than one gym in But more than one boxing. But right. I mean, we have a couple boxing things now. But I just picture poor Charles being kind of Maybe that's where Sonny, small. maybe Sonny bought it. And then remodeled it? Yeah. it's not the same setup. No. Okay. Maybe. But then there's just like a lot of, Jagger gets on stone about not finishing school. Right. And about how he basically works for Sonny. You know, like you just mentioned. And Jagger tries to do everything he can to get stone away from oh, yeah. Sonny and everything. Right. And, like I said, he came on way too strong. And it wasn't until Robin... Because when she first met him, she was giving him a hard time about his name. Mm-hmm. And she first liked him at the wedding. Is that right? No, they had hung out once before that. So they had met at the boxing ring. There was a boxing That's match right. between Jagger and, and when AJ. he wouldn't let her sit in the... Yes. yes, she asked. And she talks about that in her diary. She asked for the end seat. And he was like, no, there's a seat over there. Yep. And was kind of a jerk. And she even said something to Brenda about, let's not hang out with him again. He's a jerk. Right. And then they saw each other uh, at Kelly's a few times. And I think... I think it started to get more intentional, I think though. they hung out at the park. There was one time at Kelly's, and he mentioned, let's do this, like, as a planned thing. Uh-huh. And then I think they hung out at the park after that. And that's when he first kissed her. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yes. That's right. That's right. And then they went on the double date at... Yes. Brenda and Sonny's, which is we talked idea. about yeah. in Robin's Diary, where she got a little drunk because she kept but sneaking you saw the wine. that Sonny did not Sunny give her the wine. Sonny did not give wine. her the wine. She, she was sneaking Mike. it. Yeah. Yep. Mike got up for a beer instead. Yep. So Stone began dating Robin Scorpio despite her Uncle Mac's warning for them to stay away from each other. And Mac accent alert. <laughs> As I was watching all of this Robin and Stone, his accent is gone mm-hmm. by the end of Stone. So just throwing that out there. Uh, when Stone becomes very sick with the flu, see, and that's where they cut out, like, a whole bunch of stuff. They did, because you miss all of their falling in love. Yes. And Stone trying to do better. So Robin wanted to be in the nurse's ball, and she convinced him to do the whole Romeo and Juliet, which, again, we talked about. She broke it down more in the Robin's diary. Yeah. But he had talked about not liking school, and then it turned out that he was dyslexic, and that's why he didn't like school. It was felt too difficult for him. Yep. And watching all of these, you saw why um, Kevin was better back then than he is now. So... It good. makes me feel good, though, because when you mention characters now and I say how much I don't like them, that's my reference. Right. I saw them at what I feel like was their peak. Right. And now they are not using them to that same level. And so I'm like, yeah, I don't like it. Yeah, I don't like it. One of my favorite parts of him studying for the Romeo and Juliet thing was mm-hmm. Sonny sitting on the couch with him, helping him. I mean, right. He was really. Right. Sonny was too young to be his dad, but he was that big brother that Jagger wasn't around to be. Right. Just not always the best influence. So, yeah, they did the double date at Sonny's house because Mac refused to let them see each other. And Sonny and Mike Stone, whatever, had already decided that they were going to leave early so that Sonny could be alone with Brenda. Yep. So he sent them on an errand, and that's whenever they made the very poor choice to drive. I can't remember what kind of car it was. Was it a Porsche? I think it was. was Something fancy. I think it was. Something I will never drive in my life. Or something like that. Yes. And then he let Robin drive, and she got pulled over and was intoxicated from that wine that she drank. Well, and he smelled, the cops smelled it on her. Right. That's the thing, because she wasn't, but it was a really good scene in the police station, because I I like this now as a parent. Sean Donnelly wanted to let her off, mm-hmm. and Mac goes, no. Right. No. Right. Yes, she made the comment, they just want to punish me like I'm a common criminal, and Mac was like, you, you are, are a common criminal, you Broke yep. the law, and you will be punished as someone without any type of connections. Yes. I love Sean, too. I miss him. Are you going to talk about the bear? Oh, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to skim, like, five resources at once. I should have done a better job outlining this. I don't think that's true. I 
think that if people want to watch it, they're going to go watch it. There's not even. And you're just going to yeah get the good parts. I think everyone wants to hear from your my. So this is the first time that I have watched. Yeah, exactly. Stone like the whole kit and caboodle. And so, what were the moments just... that stand out for you? Okay. So the bear mm-hmm. when Robin got lost so shannon and i don't talk about stuff ahead of time because like we've said a million times we want the conversation to be authentic but every once in a while she will send so a text just to let me know where she's at if it's something i know more about or vice versa and so this week that was the text oh my gosh the bear and then we didn't talk about it anymore because we wanted to do it on here so go ahead with your bear <laughs> no it's okay it was so what she and stone were they were going on a picnic Yes, they were going on a picnic, and then she got lost, or... No, those bikers... Yes. The bikers came and were, like, harassing them, and Stone stood up to them, and they... I don't know. They kept showing that rag, like, they chloroformed him or something, but I don't... I didn't watch this scene. I just remember that he ended up passed out, and so she ran because she didn't know what they were going to do to her, and he told her to run. He was protecting her. Right. Which is something that Mac and all them then needed to respect him for that he was not the jerk that they thought he was. He was very concerned about her safety. So he handled the bikers and told her to run, and she ran into the woods and then ended up lost in the middle of the woods. Yes. And when we see her passed out in the woods, there's a bear. <laughs> just, it was like, an, I think it was like an animatronic bear or something, but I was just like, why is there a bear? This is so funny. But it was, because Sean was the first one really looking for her, and then he found her, because Mac wasn't around. No, Mac was somewhere. That was the whole point. Sean and Tiffany were in charge of Robin. Yes, that's and right. And Robin lied to them. I can't remember. I'm sorry. I watched almost 200 doing. videos. Oh, you're good. Like I it's, am. She lied to them and said that she had something to do, and they didn't question it because it was she Robin, was like with her girlfriends or something. Yes. Yeah. So and she, then it turned out that she was meeting Stone. And Stone, when he came to after being drugged or whatever they had done to him. And he looked, like, briefly, but he knew he couldn't find her, and so he went and got help. And then he kept saying, if something happened to her, maybe it was his fault that he should have looked for her instead of going to get help. But, you right. know, obviously you go get Sean and all his men. To look and for he... Yeah, they had the dogs out. They were yep. ready to go. Yep. And then he was mad at her for lying, too, which was very nice. Yes. But they were thankful-ish to Stone, I think. Mm-hmm. that. Right, and I think Felicia saw, those were the moments that Felicia really got to see that Stone cared, because you could see he was terrified. Oh, but then even after all that is when Mac finally realized, okay, this kid is not going anywhere, so I'm going to have to figure this out at least. Right. But he still didn't like it, but he invited Stone over for dinner. And I think that's when, is that when Stone stood up to him and was like, Robin's my girl and she's under my protection or something like that? He said that line, and I wrote it down just because I really, really liked it. <laughs> and then there was when they started working at Luke's. Wow, I really feel like I'm missing a ton. He was parking cars at Luke's, and he was proud to have had that job. We're going to go into the book. Okay. Because I feel like the book outlines it a little bit better, at least chronologically. Because yes, people who know the story are like, Shannon, what are you doing? Okay, so we've already done that. So then the Romeo and Juliet. Oh, and Mac was not happy about that. No, but Stone was so cute with that because he kissed her at the dying scene. She kissed him, and he kissed her back, and she whispered to him, you're supposed to be dead, and he was like, I can't ignore that. Sorry. And it was so typical teenager. It was so cute. Ah, here we go. This might be a good place to start. Oh, and then, so Stone was working at Luke's and is talking to Mike. And he's like, oh, hey, I'm Mike, too. But when I met Sonny, he told me that I needed to change my name into something, like, more hard or something, you know, like, something with more character or something. And plus, he's like, could you imagine having three Mikes in here? And then he starts talking about how Sonny hates the fact that he's a junior and hates the fact, or he hates Mike Sr. and the name and blah, 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 blah. And then Brenda is standing in the background, like, Dude, <laughs> you don't know. And then the second that Mike leaves is when she comes over and she's like, yeah, so that's Mike Sr. <laughs> that's Sonny's dad. But thank you for telling him how much Sonny hates him. And, but you know what? Mike handled it really well and was like, he can't help the fact that he was just repeating something that he was told. Right. So, yeah, I mean, so he and Robin got closer. Uh, oh, there was the one time when 
Felicia walked in on them. We talked about it in Robin's diary. I think that's why I'm struggling is because, like, a lot of the stuff, he really didn't have a storyline outside of. It was all. Like, the Karen, Jagger, and then. Yep. Got into the relationship with Robin. Exactly. Yes. He had stopped over to see Robin, and they were making out whenever Felicia walked in. So then she decided to have the sex talk and gave her the condom that then got dropped on the floor. Yep. And then later that day, Mac was like, hey, let's have a talk. Hey, why is there a condom on my floor? Right. And you could just see it happening in real life and how you would want to die of embarrassment if your parents tried to have that conversation with you and thought that you were already hooking up with somebody. Yep. So then it says, while Mac was in Brooklyn learning about Sonny and Scully, Mac's niece, Robin, invited Stone to their home. Robin had lost so many people she had loved in her young life, and she just wanted to hold on to Stone. In the year they had been seeing each other, she had fallen more deeply in love than she could ever have imagined, and she wanted to show Stone how much she cared. She was ready to make love with him, but Stone pulled back. What's wrong? Robin asked. I don't have any protection. Stone and Robin cooled it down and decided to wait. As he left the house, he ran into the returning Mac, who flipped out and grounded Robin. Yep. Poor Mac. Having teenage daughters myself, poor Mac. I can't even imagine as a single guy trying to figure out all this stuff because Felicia did a good job of being a mom figure to Robin, but her and Mac were deciding not to get married then and had their right. own relationship issues. Well, because that's when Maxie was also having all of her health issues. Yes. Ugh. So poor Mac trying to deal with all of that. And then it talks about when Luke's club opens up and he invited Robin to come watch B.B. King on the monitor in Sonny's apartment. And her Uncle Mac forbade her to attend the opening with Mac, or with Stone. So Mac attended. He's so unfair, Robin thought. But Uncle Mac went downstairs to the club and she was alone with the young man that she loved. This was the night for Robin and Stone that they had been waiting for. But before they could give themselves to each other, Mac unexpectedly came through the door. Seeing Robin undressed with Stone in Sonny's apartment, Mac went ballistic yeah yeah luke restrained himself while stone and robin ran off oh luke restrained him while stone and robin ran off and nothing mac could say or do kept them would keep them apart stone took them into the motel room in each other's arms stone and robin felt at home stone was prepared with a condom and he assured robin that he had test he had been tested and was hiv negative and he had been he had been tested yes. sunny made him get tested right They made love for the first time. Are you really okay? Stone tenderly asked. How could being this close to you be anything but wonderful? Robin sighed. Their night was perfect. It was so, again, like being around that age, that was what you. And then they had a vending machine picnic. Thought you wanted life to be. It was so sweet. Well, then she, not spoiler alert, when she talks to Brenda about her first time, she's like, the best part was the picnic after. Brenda's like, um, it gets better. (laughs) (laughs) no offense but (laughs) right right i liked the relationship with brenda and robin too like she did try very little sister big sister yes yes we need brenda back also the next morning robin confronted uncle mac he hadn't slept all night and was about to ground her for life when robin stopped him save your breath uncle mac we did it mac stormed over to felicia who calmed him down and went back to make sure that robin was okay robin wished that mac could see that stone was a wonderful person she and Stone developed an ongoing sexual relationship. As soon as Robin got herself on the pill, they stopped using condoms. She and Mac eventually reached an understanding that they could both live with her. That they could both live. They reached an understanding. Oh, they reached that. an understanding. I was thinking it was like going to explain the understanding. And I'm like, they could both live. What? Reached an understanding that they could both live with about her dating Stone. He didn't like it, but he had to let her grow up. If Stone couldn't shake. If Stone couldn't shake the flu, he'd have. He'd had it all winter. Could just. Oh, thanks. I don't know why I can't read today. This is what if happens could just when you stay flu, out too he'd, late. <laughs> he'd had all winter. Things would be perfect because Stone was having a nasty sore throat and just right. sniffles. And right. It was like a cold. He just could not kick. Well, and with all the doctors in the city, you know, everyone's saying, oh, yeah, people are getting this and it's just not shaking. Right. You know? Yeah. So it's not like he. Right. He didn't ignore it. He was. Treating it like a cold, which why wouldn't you if you thought that was all that you right. had? But yeah, and then so Brenda and Robin wind up talking about her first time, and that was sweet. It was sweet, and I don't know exactly where it was, but at some point, Robin says to her, and you were right, it gets so much better, and it was like, oh, okay. Yep. 
Oh, and then Robin started bringing him, like, chicken noodle soup and stuff mm-hmm. to make him feel better. I mean, that sentence kind of really wrapped it up, was that, you know, they started. Right. It was it was a real relationship. They were taking care of each other. They were making sure, just in everyday life, that was what you saw, was yep. them interacting of, oh, you're not feeling well. Oh, I did this today for school, for work, whatever. It takes us into Stone getting his diagnosis yeah. on the next page, but it just kind of throws it in there. Robin discovered that Stone couldn't read. She suspected that he was dyslexic and directed him to Dr. Kevin Collins, who was awesome back then, and he confirmed it. Kevin began working with Stone to help him read, but he was concerned about Stone's unshakable flu. Kevin ran tests and discovered the worst possible news. Stone was HIV positive. He had asked Stone to come to his office, wondering how you tell a 19-year-old kid this kind of news, and they were at Luke's when he saw him. And Stone was like, do you have my test results? And he's like, yeah, why don't you come by in the morning? He's like, well, you know. tell me now. Right. And he's like, let's let's just talk about it tomorrow. And Kevin was very matter of fact. He did not dance around it. You could tell that he definitely cared about how he was going to tell him. Right. But he was like, Stone, you, this is where you are. Let's move forward with this. Yeah. And then he got him to talk to Alan Quartermain. And Alan was so awesome. So then back to General Hospital fandom, they talk about, oh, okay, yes. Well, so Stone left Kevin's office in tears, and Robin saw him. He ran past her. Why was he so upset, she wondered. Kevin couldn't tell her. And I made the note that they used to do a really good job of HIPAA. (laughs) HIPAA? What's that? Before HIPAA. HIPAA didn't come out until 1996. Oh, okay. So they did a better job at following HIPAA before HIPAA was a thing. (laughs) That's funny. Stone went to see Robin at her house, but he couldn't bring himself to reveal the deeply tragic news. Uh So then they wound up having, there was a shootout at Luke's, which we talked about during our recap of Luke's, Mm -hmm. which was like over the summer. And Stone had jumped on top of Robin to instinctively save her. Right. And he had been struck in the leg. And then he realized, he thought that she had been shot. Right. And so he was like, you need to go get cleaned up. And then he realized it was his blood and he lost it. Yes. And... Michael Sutton was amazing Yeah, during all of this. I hate the fact that he had to die. Right. Because he did, I can only imagine being in that mindset, especially back then, you know, with, we didn't have that much information and right. we had a lot of misinformation uh-huh. or a lot of false, a lot of false information. Yeah. Or like thinking. Right. Which we'll talk about. Yeah. We had said before, we were kind of taught like we were safe because we didn't do drugs right. and we were straight. Even as women. A, right. And so as children, not that you went that far ahead in your thought process, because obviously neither one of us were sexually active, but it was kind of one of those things of even when we get to that point, we don't have to worry about it. And right. this storyline really opened your eyes that, oh, yeah, you do. Yep. So then Robin found the wounded stone in the motel where they had f- first made love because he had run away. Mm-hmm. I'll take you to the hospital and they'll treat your wound and you'll be fine. And Stone was crying. I'm telling you, they can't help me. Why can't you understand that? And she just... And it was so heartbreaking because she's just watching this man that she right. loves. And she's like, what the heck? <laughs> we'll go to the hospital. You'll be fine. What's wrong with you? And she's like, why do you keep saying that? And he says, because I'm HIV positive. And they cried together. Robin took Stone back to Kevin for answers. He had tested negative but hadn't taken the necessary retest six months later. Mm-hmm. Apparently, his addicted girlfriend, Crystal, had infected him. Though, Sto- though Stone had also had unprotected sex with other runaways. And... Dr. Alan Quartermain discovered that Stone had already developed full-blown AIDS. And the thing is, is that when Alan came in, I think it was to check his wound or whatever. Kevin turned to Stone. It was like, with your permission, to tell oh. Alan. And I'm like, that's when I wrote the HIPAA. HIPAA yeah. Because I'm like, you would think that doctor to doctor, right, they should be able to be able to. Yeah. Right. And then Alan was so kind in treating him because... He put on the gloves and he's like, this is nothing to do with you. He's like, this is how we have to handle, right, you know, everything. And that's when Alan was saying that he needed Robin to go get tested. Yes. But so Stone and Kevin had set up a treatment regimen, but their most constant thought was, what about Robin? So Robin did wind up getting the test. She tested negative, but she would have to retest for a year and a half before they could be certain that she hadn't been infected. And Robin respected Stone's wish to keep his disease a secret until he was ready to tell people. Sonny was devastated when Stone told him. Brenda could tell that Sonny was upset, but he refused to tell her why, respecting Stone's request. 
and Brenda was annoyed with Sonny by guessing and had that it had something to do with Lily. And the way that it came out was because he finally got gotten permission to tell Brenda, but he didn't want to tell her like right the second. That, right. Because it, it wasn't the right moment. And Sonny's like, can't we just talk about this tomorrow? And she says something about, you know, my mind's going through the worst thing. He's like, well, Stone has AIDS. Is that on there? Yeah. You know, and it was probably not the best way, but I mean, he was definitely not happy about well, because she was obsessed with Lily, and he was like, can you stop? We're not... Even though she was with Miguel, but the whole... <laughs> Different conversation. Yep. But speaking of Miguel, for the 1995 Nurses Ball, it's when Miguel had just found out that one of his friends had AIDS, and he dedicated the song... Oh, Miguel sang the song Power to Believe, and he dedicated it to his friend, but he didn't say who it was. Aww. And to answer our question, it was an AIDS benefit before. Yes. And then that's when AJ Quartermain cracked the joke that only idiots get AIDS and Angry Stone announced that he had AIDS and AJ left feeling awful. Stone felt relieved and Robin felt proud. She told Mac who exploded when he realized that Robin had been exposed. I feel so bad for Mac. Yeah. <laughs> I feel so bad for Mac. Mac shared his anger and his fear that he had hadn't worked hard enough to protect the little girl he loved. Felicia, too, feared for Robin. And then just talks about how Mac refused to deal with Stone and tried to avoid him. Once Stone tried to speak to Mac, Mac let him have it and said, you might have signed Robin's death warrant. Right. And he blasted Stone and he wasn't worried about it. And which was totally another true moment because you would flip out. Right. There's no nice way to handle that. And one important thing was that Stone and Robin stopped having sex. Right. Stone refused to. Mm Mm-hmm. And, oh, it, like, sums up, it jumps to when AIDS threatened to blind Stone. That was another, like, that played out for a while. Because we had just battled the dyslexia and figured out how to work with that. And he was showing how smart he was and that he hadn't quit school because he couldn't handle it. It was that he had this issue and they worked really hard with him to, you know, figure out what worked for him. And now suddenly his vision was getting all blurry and he was complaining about just his eyes being tired. Right. And it turned out to be a side effect of the AIDS. When AIDS threatened to blind Stone, even Mac found it hard not to feel for the kid. Then Robin came down with the flu. Was it AIDS? Robin was instantly retested at the hospital. A panicked Stone saw an equally frantic Mac. If there was anything I could do to make Robin safe, I would. Stone was crying and didn't notice that his poignant words were reaching Mac's heart. Stone turned to leave. Stone wait, Mac opened his arms and embraced him. As much as Mac feared what the future might hold, he finally understood the depth of the dying young man's love for his niece. Why hadn't he seen it before? In an instant, Mac realized that he could never have kept Robin and Stone apart. The little girl had raised had found true love. Stone was Robin's destiny. Family and friends, both near and far, showered Stone and Robin with love and compassion, even as they struggled on with their own complicated lives and loves. That's the kind of town poor Charles is. We should go live there. Um, where adventure can begin in your very own backyard. <laughs> where your worst enemy can become your best friend. And where the unexpected is around every corner. A community of people who care about each other. People who rally in times of need. People who come to cherish through the years of heartache and humor. People who have become our friends. I like that paragraph. Yeah. That's a really random paragraph. Well, because we're cutting to the end of the book. But then oh, I loved all the scenes of Robin reading to stone yes so sweet yes and i think one of the most powerful moments from jumping back to like when he got diagnosed was when he ran to the park and was pounding his hands on the uh he was like pounding his fist on a bench Mm -hmm. and his hands started to bleed and then he freaked out and was trying to like rub it away because right you know oh the other thing jason yeah quartermain came over (laughs) After the nurse's ball and apologized for AJ and basically said, yeah, he's an idiot. Right. And he asked Stone to come be his workout buddy. Mm-hmm. Because he's like, I got a gym at the Quartermain Mansion and no one's using it. I thought that we could yes, work together. And so that was awesome. Right. No, the storyline itself was just so good. And it says that in here about how they played it out in real, real time. Yes. Uh, I lost the page. It was on. It didn't finish 1995. So now we're going to have to fill in the blanks. And then there was also when I watched the video, we talked about when 
Stone was helping Lucky build the go-kart. Yes. It was actually really cool because they didn't talk about Sly was also there. And oh, I should have written on this girl's name because they kept saying her full name. And she had some kind of, it, it was just like the new girl in town or whatever. Okay. But they just kept saying her full name. And it was just like kind of weird. But anyway, but when, I mean, Stone is talking them through and here's what we're looking for. Here's what we're going to be doing. If this is wrong, this is what we have to check, blah, 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 blah. And then he gets cut and he freaked out. But the, before he had even gotten started working on the go-kart, he had said to the kids, by the way, I have AIDS. And they're right. like, all right, cool. So can we still do this? Yeah. You know, like they didn't, not that they didn't care, but when he got cut, he immediately jumped back told the kids to like get away from the go-kart and everything. And Laura did the same thing that Alan did when she put on the gloves because first Stone wouldn't let her right. touch. And then she held up her hands and was like, I have gloves on. Right. Like, just let me help, help you. you with this. Yeah. And oh, it was just so nice because then Lucky thanked Laura and was like, that was really cool. And then I watched whenever he went to the school to talk to the kids about AIDS mm-hmm. and the young man called him the F word and... Stone kind of lost it on him and was like, I'm not. Right. And that doesn't matter. And basically sent the kid crying. But that truly was how we were taught. Yeah, it was. Oh, and then back after, uh, like, I think it was after he was diagnosed. Yes. But it was after uh, Ned and Lois's wedding. Mm -hmm. She went and got that thing that Anna wore on her wedding. The head. Oh, yeah. The headpiece. And she said the vows to Stone. That was sweet. And then Brenda... When she found out, you know, she went and thanked him. Right. Or, like, offered his help and everything. Right. And everyone wrote those letters that we talked about at the end of Robin's diary to yep. explain how they had felt. Definitely go and read those if you have not already. Oh, and then they did the AIDS walk, which we also talked about. That mm-hmm. woman said the horrible thing in the park. Yeah, we're kind of jumping all around. Oh, Robin thought that she had strep throat. And that's when. Yes. Yep. Yes. And he was freaking out until. Yep. She was told she was fine. Oh, and then after he had, was it after he had started going blind? And then he wound up having to go in the hospital, and that's when his T-cells were starting to go down, and they Mm -hmm. knew that it was kind of coming to the end. To the end. And so he moved into the penthouse, and that's when Sonny bought Sean Donnelly's penthouse, and Robin's like, by the way, there's a state-of-the-art security system. I can show you how to work it. (laughs) Sonny's like, you can't? There's some secret rooms back here. And then when they're helping him, I guess, set up his room and everything, AJ and Jason were helping him move. And he had to sit down and take all of his pills. Yeah. And he rattled off. And there's a video specifically on the playlist th- playlist that has him go through the pill regimen. Because he's like, and this is what I have to do in the morning. And this is what I have to do in the afternoon. And this is, he's like, I have to take 20 pills in the morning. Oh, my gosh. Right. Right. And they've kept up with that, too. Whenever Robin talks now about she's still on her pills. Right. And she'll talk about, you know, it's not just one pill. It's a cocktail. There are many. Right. That are doing what they need to do. And then there was the one night at, I think it was, was it Maxie's Halloween party when Luke asked him what he wanted to do? There was one night at Luke's, because, I mean, there's a ton of night at Luke's. Okay. And Luke asked Stone what he really, really wanted to do. And Stone was like, not have AIDS? Like, it, was, <laughs> it was something like that. Oh, and that's the thing, too. Stone had a really good sense. He had a sense of humor. Oh, my gosh. Yes, he did. But there was something... Long story short, Luke wound up t- taking him to the bridge, and he went bungee jumping. Yes. And, yes, Robin talks about that in her diary, too, because it was, like, spur of the moment. It yep. wasn't, do you have a bucket list? Like, let's go through that that's or whatever. That's how he created the bucket list. Right. Because Luke got his, yes, juices flowing of, okay, what can, what do I want to do before I pass away? Mm-hmm. And so then. Because, of course, Luke has bungee equipment just laying around no he knew someone they they actually explained it he's like oh yeah a good friend of mine blah 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 which i mean Mm -hmm. if i said i wanted to bungee jump right now i could not have it coordinated by this afternoon no but it was just really nice to see that and then so they did the memory book and i watched all of that of them reading and you cried and they read uh (laughs) each of their letters to him and then stone was great and he went to Mac after reading his letter in the memory book. And they both had visions of what Stone and Robin would be if this was not the path that they were on. Aww. So Stone's like, yeah, I know what you think our vision would be. And he basically has him and Robin coming into the Outback as like a mafia man. And 
she comes in waddling pregnant and they have like five or six kids already and she's all with the lowest yeah. accent and everything and he has his hair pulled back in a ponytail like he's a dawn or something and even the baby like double kisses Max's cheek and everything <laughs> and Max says that that's not what he pictures he pictures that he would have become a great actor and that Robin would have become a professor and so it was nice to see that yeah. Mac had a different future right I think he finally got it in the end I don't think that you couldn't I mean their love right. their love was the definition of true love yep and then there was some oh and then he wound up having Jagger and Gina come see him right and, and Gina tell- was like a huge deal because they did not get along yeah. She looked down on him so much. And she was mad at him and, like, didn't believe it. And, yeah. Another thing was at the park they went to, they went to the park to, like, listen to music. And he saw somebody with end stage AIDS. And he was just so mad because he's like, I don't want to be that person. He's like, I don't want you to be basically carrying me to go see things. Right. And then there was the time that he went to the jewelry store to pick out a ring. Yes. For him and she still has that ring I was wondering yes there's a lot of things that I'm wondering yes she still has that ring she's mentioned it at some different points when she was talking to Emma okay I mean obviously not recently or whatever but yeah. um she has referenced it she still has the ring unless you know I don't know why she would get rid of it that wouldn't make any sense yeah see it would have been perfect to have had to have Patrick come back now and have right. Robin come back also, or Emma come back and say, Mommy asked me to put flowers or something, you know, right. to bring all this back up because it was such a good storyline. And then, so after like the memory book and everything, he wound up having to go back in the hospital. And then that's when Miguel came and said goodbye, mm-hmm. which I was like, that was a really sweet goodbye. I love Miguel. That's Ricky Martin. I love Miguel. Well, it was so funny because my husband was sitting on the couch. As I was watching some of this, I was like, do you know who that is? And he's like, did he start singing Live in La Vida Loca? No, but he was like, is that Ricky Martin? I'm like, it sure is. I hate these write-ups. They're not good. I mean, and I, I should not be saying that because I'm not going to take the, maybe one day I will take the time to write this all out. <laughs> I feel like there's just too much. There is. but And everyone has their own different take on it. So they include facts. That we may not necessarily have included. Right. Stone cut his hair because they were going to check his brain for something. That's when they found out about the lymphoma, wasn't it? That could be. I didn't watch. Okay. I didn't watch as many as you did. Oh, I think I watched too much and I did not take good enough notes that I'm like. I just followed the basic storyline. I didn't get into as much detail as you did. So then. Oh, you know what I forgot about was. Is that when, when they, they did were- the scan because he, could, he couldn't see? Yes. Is that why they were doing yes. it? Yes. Okay. See, my brain works a little bit with That's it. okay. <laughs> and then he asked to go home. And he was like, I don't want to stay here. I want to go to the penthouse and be comfortable. But before all that, back at Maxie's Halloween party, she wanted to give him her guardian pumpkin. Oh. And it was like little Maxie. Yeah. It wasn't Kirsten Storm. Right. But it was it was a really sweet moment. But that's when, so back to the, he wanted to leave the hospital he was given three to six weeks to live because he could have had that surgery or he could have gone like under these protocols or something right but it would have only been like six to nine months and he could have been sick right so yeah he did not want feel any worse than he already did and he didn't want to be any more of a burden on everyone than he already felt that he was oh there it is stone at maxi's halloween party so it was after he had already (laughs) left okay anyway and then Robin and Stone start planning their kids and their future. So, like, they would sit there and do, and just talk about it. And it was right. beautiful. Mm-hmm. It really was. And then he asks if they can move up Christmas because he realized that he's probably not going to be there for Christmas. Yes. And so Mike Corbin wound up having to cut down a tree because Luke told him to. And everyone came over and decorated it and brought some gifts and... Mike and Sonny cooked in the kitchen, and it was the funniest. <laughs> I really enjoyed watching that because they fought and bickered. and They didn't kill each other. They got the meal done. What were you going to say? What is Robin's son's middle name? 
because I feel like it's weird that she would not have put Stone's name somewhere in there. I was wondering, too. It's Robert. It's Noah Robert. It's their dad. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, I don't like that. I've thought about that. Okay. And then, oh, I think I, oh, I jumped ahead. So before Christmas, though, is when Robin found out that she was HIV positive because she was asking, They were. I think they were talking more about the bucket list, and he's like, can you please go get tested one more time? And that's when I hated, I hated that she had to find that out. Yeah. And I know it made the storyline more realistic, but it was so sad. I just felt like it would have been better a year later. I don't know. They said she had to be tested for quite some time before you know if it would have been towards the very end. Right. And I like how she called Mac immediately. And she was like, I don't know how to tell him. And Mac's like, maybe you don't have to. And she's like, but there's been no lies between us. He's like, well, then that's your answer. Right. You know, and he supported her telling him. And see, watching it made so much more sense than reading it. Mm -hmm. Because when I read it, I'm like, why couldn't you have just waited? No. She, it was, I'm with her. I Right. It would have been a disservice to their relationship to end it on that line. And he would have been able to pick up on the vibes of, okay, something's wrong with you. Why aren't you telling me? Yes. And then it would have come out and they'd been mad. So she just told him. And, I mean, he broke down. Oh. Right. And then having to tell Sonny and Sonny told Brenda. And nicely, though, he told her a right, lot right. better than <laughs> It he, was he not about, the same as he did about Stone. Yep. But Mac actually comforted oh, yeah. Stone about Robin's diagnosis. Right. Which was beautiful to watch. It was, oh. And a huge step for Mac because yeah. you know... All the emotions he must have been feeling. Robin started reading him her diary. And they, basically they all started to say goodbye. And at one point he was like, I want to go visit all of the old hangs. Mm-hmm. And so Robin started talking him through, okay, we're sitting at Kelly's. And I can't do it. <laughs> <laughs> you are <laughs> such a dork. But she starts talking him through, like, okay, we're at Kelly's, and okay, it's getting weird. Let's leave, and, like, let's go over here. And it was really, really nice. And then... You're such a dork. (laughs) Next was when he was in his room, and he asked... She was going to get him something to eat, too, and he's like, please don't leave. Right. They they were, like, sitting in one chair or whatever, and she moved him over to the bed and was like, okay, I'm going to go get you something to eat. And he was like, no, don't leave me. Yep. And you could just feel like you were in that room the and tension changed he had her go over to the window and he could see her and then he was gone. <laughs> <laughs> shannon is like legit crying you're so cute yes it was beautiful he told her to go but stand it was really sweet and it like, was now having watched oh my god <laughs> <laughs> i'm gonna make fun of you for this forever i hope <laughs> that you've stuck this out long enough through my horrible retelling of stone to hear me cry all about it Yes, he told her to go stand in the window, and she kind of looked at him like he was crazy, and he said, I, I want to see you. Yeah. And again, at that moment, it was like, see you as much as he could, yeah. but as he was passing, then his vision completely cleared, and he could see her beautiful face, and then she went over and laid on him, and she, like, laid there for a while, yeah. and then Sonny came in and was like, is he sleeping? And then was like, oh, he's dead. Yeah. And, wow. So... It was so hard. And then they had the beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, but you were so funny. Go ahead. <laughs> but no, like, like they had the beautiful memorial for him mm-hmm. and everything. And then Robin went around and gave stuff to people. <laughs> I'm still crying. <laughs> so, but she gave. She gave Sonny one of his rings. And uh-huh. does Sonny still wear that? Oh, I forgot I to know. go back and check. And then she gave one. And then Sonny said that Mac needed to have the other one. Because he couldn't wear two rings. Right. And he was like, can I give this to somebody else? And he gave it to Mac. Yes. And then she went and gave Kevin his glasses. <laughs> <laughs> and Kevin said that he would put them on his desk and they would never leave. And I'm like, but are they still there? <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh and then during the memorial or was it during the memorial where max started seeing robert like he started
start envisioning Robert standing there. It was Christmas. It was the Christmas, so it was. And, like, Robert's, like, standing up on the stairs and stuff. And this is when Robert was supposed to be dead. Right. Which doesn't you know really Mac... make as much sense now. No. And Mac used to call him Robbie. I vaguely remember that, it but was, that's, that's weird. all he called him, though, was Robbie, Robbie, Robbie. So weird. So then. Okay. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> and then they wound up. They took the ashes and they took Stone's ashes and she and Sonny. Sprinkled them over the bridge where he bungee right. jumped and everything. And she told him the whole story about how they went, bun- or he went bungee jumping and everything. And then I think it was a couple weeks later, later or it, to me, it felt like a couple weeks later. I guess Sonny was cleaning up, cleaning out the room or whatever. And he found a letter to Robin yes. from him, from Stone. And he brought it to her at work. Oh, yeah. And we forgot to say that she didn't go to Yale because stone being sick but i feel like we knew that from right robin's diary but, yeah because um, mac was not happy but so she's she wound up not being able to finish reading the letter and sunny read it to her and it was really good yeah <laughs> that's in the book but i will have you I'm not not reading it. It. Well, you read that I'm not reading because... it. <laughs> so then and then i did watch a couple more like a few years later of sunny and robin wound up always meeting on the anniversary, and yes. then it was the one time, I think it was 15 years, was when she had brought Laura back out of her catatonic state to celebrate the 25-year anniversary of Luke and Laura's wedding. And then she had just gone back into. Okay. And so she was, like, all mad at herself, and she's like, I gave these people false, false hope. And it was, like, right when she started dating Patrick and about how, you know, he says that he thinks he loves her, and, you know, she's all scared and everything. And Sonny's like, Stone would want you. To, you know, and I Move mean, on and be they've always had a really interesting. Yeah. But then that bridge was torn down because the city had deemed it unsafe. Uh-huh. And then that's when Jason had the footbridge built. Right. And so, yes, that is. So, like, when we talk about the bridge, it's ish. Same bridge ish. Yes, but not the same. Yeah. Yep. And then Stone did make an appearance in 2010. When Robin was stuck in a well, and I can't remember why, but he basically told her that she romanticized their relationship a lot, like in a kind way. It was a really, really good scene. You can watch them on YouTube. Yeah. But he said, he's, and she's like, am I seeing you because I'm dying? And he's like, no. But he's like, you have this wall up. He's like, there's a part of your heart that Patrick can't get to. Right. Because of me. And he's like, yeah, we embraced where we were. And we, he's like, but if I hadn't gotten sick, we would have fought. Yes, exactly. You know, you know, who's to say we would even still be together. Right. You know, stuff like that. And, but he did it in a kind way. This sounds right. really horrible. It was the permission way that I'm saying, to move on. Right. But it was, it was really a beautiful scene. And you can watch a video of the actors also talking about it. So that was nice. And then. In August 2017, he returned to help Sonny when he was shot and trapped in a dumpster. And Sonny asked him the same thing. Are you here because I'm dying? <laughs> Why do people keep asking me that? <laughs> but it was right after, I think that was right after Morgan had passed away. Or he didn't pass away. He was killed. Right. And he's like, you know, did you know about my son? And, you know, I named him after you. Or I named him after my two favorite people, you and Jason. And all this stuff. So... It was really good. I, I really don't know if we just did a good job explaining Stone. I think it was totally worth it hearing Shannon cry. I'm apologizing for the stiff sniffles. Oh, it was so cute that you got attached to it because that, <laughs> that's what I was talking about. Yes. Like, every time I say I love Stone and Robin, obviously. I mean, I, I know. It, and that's the thing. You think you know the story. Seriously, just invest a week of your life. And watch it on YouTube. Yeah. Because, and there's still a ton missing. I know that there's right. a ton missing. No, and I didn't go back and watch all of them because I, oh, I didn't plan my time very well because of it being birthday week. But on top of that, I knew that the gist, like, beginning, middle, you end. already watched and, it. And I yeah. didn't need to, whatever. And now I understand why you were under-impressed with Oscar. See? See? Now, so much makes sense to you because it does. That's what I was going to read in the book. It says, this is a story of choices, explained executive producer Wendy Rich when 
the story was announced to the public. Knowledge is power, and we hope with the story to empower our audience with practical information about the choices individuals have regarding sex in the 90s. Protection, contraception, HIV, blood tests, monogamy, and abstinence are all factors that must be considered by any person in this age who considers sexual expression. We're offering this information dramatically through the most intimate experiences of these two young lovers. And I think that that's why the story was so powerful was because, like we've said several times now, back then it was presented like this is something that couldn't touch us and a whole group of people because you weren't into that lifestyle no matter what that meant at that time. And they played it true to life. It wasn't rushed through of, oh, he has it, now he dies, and we're done in a month. And they wrapped it up in, like, a pretty little package. And Robin still deals with it and still talks about it. That's something they never forgot. It wasn't like she's magically cured or some weird doctor that you've never heard of. Yeah. Yeah. She still deals with it. She still talks about it. It was a reality when she was pregnant, when she was deciding to get pregnant, like we talked about on Night Shift. When she was deciding to be with Jason and be with Patrick. I mean. Right. It's things that we should think about, but she has to think about who she's exactly. with. Exactly. Right. It's know? a decision every time, you know, and Patrick and her had had a huge conversation whenever yep. they were getting together. She was like, I'm scared. Like, this is a real thing. Oh, that's thing. what she tells Stone. She's like, we got, we connected because he had been exposed. And that's right. when they really, when he stopped being just like a cocky yes, surgeon and everything. Yeah. Exactly. So I think that's why this was so much better than Oscar and is one of those storylines that everyone talks about being so amazing is that it was done 100% properly and then they've continued it's continuing carrying to do so. it on. Yes. Yeah. Well, and think about it. I mean, back in the early 90s, we had 90210, Melrose Place, like all the primetime dramas. I mean, you can watch all the older shows. and Right. Nobody talked about it. And if so, it was a scare oh, I I think I may have come in contact. They went to the doctors. They got the test done. By the next episode, they had results. It was fine, and you moved on. There was never any... It's like seeing a teen pregnancy story, which obviously is not tragic like this, but whenever they have the teen think that they're pregnant, and then, oh, no, they're not, and everything moves on, and it's fine. That's not real life. Like, sometimes you are. Sometimes this... You have to and make not these the decisions. MTV style either. Right, exactly. Or they conveniently have the teenager miscarry and now, oh, all her problems are solved. No, no. that's not how it goes. And so to see this. I am glad that they had Robin the whole way. test positive. I mean, I feel like it went down a real big disservice I am to too, the story. Exactly. And I, I am too because they continued yeah. letting, like, leading well, her life through goes this on. life. Exactly. Uh, Jesse, but oh my gosh, what was the girl's name on Life Goes On? Kelly Martin, whoever she played, Rebecca, something like that. I don't, I know exactly Whatever. what you're talking about, yeah. but I don't know. But she didn't. Right. right. And just, you're not guaranteed to just because you come in, like, right. more intimate it's, with somebody, but. Exactly. But it would have been taking the easy way out for Robin to have not ever got that diagnosis. Right. And then, okay, it's done and over with. Right. So. Yeah, I'm, I'm so glad that you liked it. I did. You know, I mean, did I, you cry? Well, and then my husband was like, so could they bring him back? I said, they would never. I said, storylines like this, I said, they would never no. bring him back. He's like, would he ever be another? I was like, nope. No. I said, they would never, ever, ever change this. I said, the fact that they even had him come back as an angel twice. Right. You know, or a figment of imagination or whatever. You know, that's, yes, that's it. I'm like, but they would never. They would never do a disservice. No. So. No. There's certain storylines you just don't touch, and this was one of them. Yep. <sighs> now that Shannon's had that drained. emotional roller coaster. <laughs> They're so cute. I really hope that when I edit this and everything that it makes a lot more sense. It will. Okay. It will. We're good. Well, because reading it, it was just like, Stone came to town. Stone met Sunny. Stone met Robin. Stone found out he had AIDS. Stone, Stone died. died. Right. And I'm like, no. There was so much more than that. Yeah. And it really was. I mean, it's stuff that you really can't explain. It was It was stuff that you had to watch and experience them just being. You could feel the emotion yeah. coming from the TV. Yeah. And it some scenes, good. there's just no way. Either the actors aren't good enough or the rating's not good enough. I still enough, think that Oscar whatever. was tragic. I Oscar, mean, absolutely. I mean, it was its own 
yes, Oscar was tragic. It to me, it just felt too inauthentic because it was like they were trying to recreate this, right? And you can't. There were some similarities. Yes. Yeah, you can't recreate it, and not saying that there couldn't be multiple, you know, teen love stories that end up tragically, right? But this felt like they were really trying to capture that same magic and. Right. You know, nothing That's against not. those actors, but they just couldn't do what no. Robin and Stone did. No. So. Okay. So, <laughs> join us on Monday as we talk about this week's shows. Have a good weekend. And we'll meet you at the pier. Bye. Bye. If you enjoyed today's show, we invite you to go to pier54podcast.com to subscribe on your favorite platform. Don't forget to leave us a review. And you can also follow us on many social media channels. Just search for Peer 54 Podcast. Also, we are not perfect, so if there is something that we missed or messed up, just let us know by emailing us at peer54podcast at gmail.com. 